Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Blessed Redeemer, we approach your throne of grace tonight with grateful hearts. You, O God, are our shelter, our sustainer, our provider, our deliverer, our protector, our comforter, our guide, and indeed, our all in all. 
Father, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise because you are worthy. Father God, in spite of your relentless grace and mercy towards us, we often sin and fall short of your glory. We repent of our shortcomings. And we ask you, dear God, for your forgiveness. We ask you for your divine cleansing in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for yet another opportunity to gather virtually to worship and praise you and to connect with each other. We thank you, Father, for your unconditional love which you have expressed for us by allowing your Son, Jesus Christ, to sacrifice his life for our sins. We thank you, Father, for sending your Holy Spirit to diligently guide us into the truth. We pray for our Bishop, Derek, all of our ministers, pastors, lay persons, technicians, and all those who continue to plan and implement worship and to do the general business of the church. Father God, let the power of your Holy Spirit constantly renew and revive them and unite them in love so that they would live in total dependence on you in the precious name of Jesus. We pray for our Prime Minister, Governor General, and all those who help to make or make decisions for our country. We pray that they would always seek your counsel. Strip them of all selfish ambition in the name of Jesus. We pray for the sick and shut-ins everywhere. We pray for those who care for them in any way. Father God, tonight we pray for a fresh anointing on the one who would lead this devotion. We pray that those who are listening would be blessed in the name of Jesus. Father God, let your Holy Spirit take control even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Of sorrow, free from my darkness.
A blessed good night, brothers and sisters. I would like to begin today with a poem that I'm sure that many of us have heard or heard of, and it is entitled Footprints in the Sand by Mary Stevenson. It goes like this. One night I dreamed a dream as I was walking along the beach with my Lord. Across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never ever during your trials and testings. For when you only saw one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Every time we read this poem, we should be encouraged because we know that our Heavenly Father is never far away. He is always near. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 tells us, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Each time I read this promise from Jesus, I am filled with encouragement and reassurance. I would like to focus on a few things from these three verses. The fact of being weary and being burdened, rest and yoke. Have you noticed that Jesus uses the word rest twice in those three verses? Rest can refer to being relieved from exertion or peace of mind. As our nation and world battle with COVID-19, and as we are continually bombarded with negative news about infections and virus-related deaths and surges, our minds need this rest, this peace, this quietness, this relief from the mental exertion, and we need peace of mind evermore. When our minds are irritated, when they are experiencing an escalation of intense emotions like fear or anger, we cannot hear the Holy Spirit's still small voice. All the emotional noise drowns out any chance we have to hear the calming voice of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us and the instructions that are waiting for us. Brothers and sisters, I want peace of mind. What about you? Rest also has a meaning of something used for support. That is what Mary Stevenson is describing in her poem. When some people, including Christians, experience troubling times, they are sometimes so mentally and emotionally drained that just doing routine things can be a struggle. Those are the times that our Heavenly Father steps in and carries us. Those are the times when he whispers, peace, be still. Jesus wants us to know that everything is going to be all right. We are going to come out on the other side of this battle with COVID-19 stronger. And I believe with a deeper love and appreciation for what Jesus did for us on the cross and continues to do for us today. Verse 28 says, Come close to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Remember the poem said, During her worst time, she only saw one set of footprints, and the Lord said, It was then that he carried her. 
Have you ever gone on a long walk with a child or been with a child for a long time? What happened usually on the way home? And my mother can attest to this all those times that we visited Bridgetown together. I got tired. And she had to pick me up and carry me. When children need relief from whatever is troubling them, whatever weariness is overcoming them, they go to their parents and their parents give them that relief. Whether it means picking them up, holding them, carrying them. That's what parents do. So when we go to our Heavenly Father, He does the same for us. We must go to Jesus. Jesus must be our go-to person. And how do we do this? We go to Jesus when we pray. We go to Jesus when we declare his promises in our lives. We go to Jesus when we praise and worship him. We go to Jesus when we sit quietly in his presence. Let me remind you what Jesus says about his peace in John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace that Jesus gives is not determined by the circumstances we face. The peace that Jesus gives is not determined by what we see in the news or read in the news. The peace that Jesus gives is not of this world. And the only way we will be able to access that peace is through Jesus. During this time when so many are becoming mentally and physically worn out, Jesus says, come to me and receive the peace and quietness that your soul, your mind, and your body needs. Come to me and your soul, your mind, your body will be refreshed and rejuvenated. If there was ever a time when we needed to go to Jesus, that time is now. Let us not forget the importance of the yoke. The word yoke means to bind. It was a wooden frame placed on the backs of oxen or other beasts of burden to make them pull in tandem and it yoked them together. Many times a younger ox was yoked to an older, more experienced ox so he could learn what to do and how to do it. That's very important for us because Jesus says next, and learn of me. Jesus says, I am the elder ox and you are still very young and inexperienced. So come to me and yoke yourself to me. Let me teach you how to live as a son. Let me show you how to live as a daughter of God. Jesus is saying, if you will let me teach and mend to you, I will show you how to do everything that I did when I was on earth. What he needs from us is to allow him to be the elder ox in our lives and for us to be gentle and humble in heart. We must be willing to be taught his ways and if we are willing to be taught, he says we will find and obtain rest for our souls. And so brothers and sisters, rest is waiting for us. If we are willing to let Jesus teach us his way, we will obtain what is already waiting for us. Rest for our souls and our minds. Jesus says, do you want peace of mind? Come to me. Do you want to sleep peacefully at night? Come to me. Let me teach you my ways and you shall have them. Jesus says that when we are yoked to him, when we are plowing in tandem with him, our lives will not be burdened down with the things life throws at us. He says his burden is light. Oftentimes the burden the ox had to bear was so heavy that he could stumble under its weight. But Jesus says when we are yoked to him, we will never stumble or fall because it is his burden. When we are yoked to Jesus, our burden becomes his burden. Jesus says his burden is light. His burden is easy. When we purposefully yoke ourselves to Jesus, our burden will be easy. As our nation and as the world battles COVID-19, remember, Jesus encourages us to latch on to him, to stay connected to him. 
and following his footsteps. We know that he has a plan to help us to get through whatever it is we are going through. He knows exactly what we need to keep us from being overwhelmed by what we bear. And nowadays by what we hear and what we see. But we have to come to Jesus. So I encourage you to let him take your burden. I encourage you to rest in him. And he will see us through all of life's journey. That is his promise to you and me. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, when you work, work as though you worked for the Lord. When you rest, rest in the sovereign grace of God. And when you celebrate, celebrate as a people with the greatest reason for love, joy, and celebration. Go now in the grace and forgiveness of our Savior, and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our daily devotion we trust it has been a blessing to you now together let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly